Good morning. Just a few announcements. Um, after the service today, there will be a, uh, a small reception downstairs um, 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 congratulating Hunter and Wyatt for being baptized. So um, also, um, the next two weeks are important, two important weeks. Um, next Sunday, we're, we're going to have one service. Just because we have some things to do, we need to gather as a congregation to do um, to make a, uh, to do a, uh, an important vote. And um, the following sa uh, Sunday is one service also where we're going to meet a pastoral candidate. The day before that, on Saturday, though, we're going to have that meet and greet with that pastoral candidate. Candidate. So those are some important events uh, coming up. Does anyone else have any uh, announcements that they want to? Say? Yes, the, both services are at 10 o'clock. Also, uh, I guess we, um, well, we are welcoming Bev Banyer, Pastor Bev Banyer, um, to our congregation again um, to lead our worship. <laughs> Missy and I toured. Germany one year together and uh, we didn't even fight we were roommates for two weeks and didn't even have a fight you know it was one of the <laughs> I think at the end of every day we were so exhausted we just fell asleep well I'm glad to be here especially for the baptism of two little boys who are very pleasant and uh, smiley and excited to have their extended family here in this celebration today so welcome to the whole family, huh? The family affair. And they'll be welcomed into the family of Christ and the family of St. John, which is also wonderful. Um, I'm glad the sun's up now. I didn't realize that when you start to come from Zillianople to here at 7 in the morning, the sun doesn't come up until about 25 after 7, and then it hits you in the eye. <laughs> In the summertime, it's not like that. Well, I'm glad to be here. If I have a coughing spell, because I do, I'm not contagious, I'm not sick, I have the water there, I have all kinds of things. But things went well. Today is a, the almost the conclusion of the story of Joseph and his brothers. And it's so appropriate that we are looking at family and brothers when we're going to baptize two brothers. And um, I, I just wanted to point out that the uh, prayer of the day will sound very familiar because it's an adaptation of St. Francis of Assisi's prayer. So you've probably heard it before. And when you hear that, is that familiar? It is. Well, we're really glad to see you here. And we gather this day. I guess this isn't going to fall off. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Please stand as you are able. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to all of you the entire forgiveness of all your sins 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I guess this has to go back. Thank you. I was there to hear your warning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off To find where demons dwell When you heard the wonder of the word I was there to cheer you on You were raised to praise the living Lord to whom we all belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dust till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too long, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes I'll be there as I have always been Just one more surprise I was there to hear your warning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice the day you were baptized, see your life unfold. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Help save, comfort, and different us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God of heavenly King, King Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Son of, of the Father, Lord God, Lord God of Lord God, 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 you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You're seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. We 
with, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit in, the in the glory of God, God the Father. Amen. We will pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace that where there is hatred, we may sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. They don't have bulletins. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my, still, my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me Does here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Okay. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before Does you to preserve you for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come into poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. 
Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. The deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O God. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because in you they seek refuge. The lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. A reading from 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, How are the, the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed is its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is, as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to the sixth chapter of Luke. Last week we heard the Beatitudes according to Luke in what is known as the Sermon on the Plain and this sermon continues today with this reading. Jesus said, but I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, 
pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? Even the sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemy. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will not be put at your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, if the young folks would come forward. We're going to have a review today. Does anybody know what's going to happen in a little bit? Come on. Yeah, good to see you. You going to come up? You want to come up and sit down? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can come up. Oh, yeah, we want you to be comfortable. You going to get up? There you go. Yeah, big kids, huh? Yeah. This is Hunter. Huh? Huh? Oh, the other one is over there in his... Uh, uh, what do you call that thing? Okay. He, he's content right now, and that's okay. Well, what's that over there? Yeah, it's a baptismal font, huh? And what's in the baptismal font? Uh-huh. And what's special about this candle? We light it when we have a baptism. We light it at Christmas. We light it uh, at uh, Easter and the season of Easter. And when people die, it is put in front of the casket here as a reminder that you've been baptized. Hi. So what else do we do when we baptize? Anything else happen? I'll give. I'll, I'll show you some things, and it may give you an idea. What's this? It's a napkin, and what do I use this baptismal napkin for? Huh? Yeah, wipe, wipe off the forehead after we baptize him. Some people don't like wet foreheads. Okay, so they're baptized. And then we do this. And then, anybody remember what this is about? Does it smell good? 
You don't like the smell. Do you like the smell? It's sort of strong. Do you know what it is? It's the it's frankincense and myrrh oils. Did you ever hear of frankincense and myrrh before? Where? At the manger, yeah, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. So you'll be anointed with this oil. You were when you were baptized. Often we anoint the sick. And near the end of the service, what happens with this candle? Anybody remember? Yeah. We light it from the Christ candle and give it to the, those who've been baptized. And then on the anniversary of their baptism, they hint you can light it. Both of them have a cake or something, make a celebration. Kids love cakes and celebrations. Yeah. That, and at the conclusion of all this, Missy will read something about let your light so shine before others that they may know that your good works and honor the Father in heaven. So, and when you were baptized, whose child are you? God's child. And you're all children of God. Everybody out here is all, probably everybody out here is a child of God. And once, you're, and once God claims you, it's forever. Just like a good parent claims you forever, even when upset with some of what you do. Because God is love. And that just shows his love. So that's what you will all be witnessing soon. And when we do the baptisms, if you would like to come and stand up behind there and watch the whole thing, you're welcome to do it. Okay? Well, thanks for being here. And thanks for witnessing getting two new brothers in our family here at St. John. Okay? Thank you. We Lutherans have a habit of making a big deal of baptism. I was at a conference once with women uh, ministers, and we had somebody from Luther Seminary talking about baptism, and all these other Luther, uh, men, women ministers who weren't Lutheran says, you make a big deal out of this, don't you? And we said, yep. It's one of the two sacraments of our church. As I read through today's gospel lesson, one thing it, it's, it popped out is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And then later Jesus says something a little bit different. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. And this theme of mercy echoes in the first lesson today, the story of Joseph being reunited with his brothers. Well, today we're celebrating families, and we've all had family experiences, memories we like and memories we hope people don't remember. Same thing with Joseph's brothers. I was together with uh, a sister and two of my brothers last night, and... Uh, a couple times we would say to the other family members who were there, well, we won't tell you about that story. It may pique their interest a bit, but, you know, we don't want to embarrass them too much. When we start about our childhood, there always are some embarrassing moments. But there are also some incidents that we hope are good. So if you recall the story of Joseph... Joseph went out to his brothers who were shepherds in the field, and his brothers, like, oh, there's that annoying little brother again. And what do they do? They sell him off to some people going to Egypt. And then they told their dad, we don't know what happened to him. He fell into a ditch. But that wasn't the end of the story of Joseph. 
There are things that define what family is, and the conclusion of the Joseph story is exactly like that. Now, it's good to see all the family here today, because this is a family celebration. And when my nieces and nephews, and now my grandnieces and niece and nephews uh, are growing up, if it's a little league game, or if it's a musical, or a concert, or a baptism, and especially when it's a birthday, we get together and celebrate. And one year, my, bro my nephew said to me, why don't we take, he had four sons, why don't we take the boys to see Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream? And the, and the kids, the boys were intrigued with this brother's story, you know. And afterwards, one of them, Grady, said to me, I didn't realize shepherds wore cowboy hats. I said, uh, okay. He said, you know, whoever made those pictures in the Bible didn't have them in cowboy hats. They didn't have cowboy clothes on or anything. Is the Bible wrong? Are the pictures wrong? And I'm like, when you ask a preacher a question like that, what can you expect? I'm like, God, give me an answer, give me an answer. And I said, well, you know, they had to use their imagination to see how they dressed because it was a long, long time ago and we didn't have cameras. And I guess that's what they imagined how they dressed. Well, then the boys were delighted that the shepherds really wore cowboy hats. You know, what do you do about things like that? And then one time we were all, um, I think it was the Pine Richland School District this time, and that was because one of my nieces was, of course, the star of the show. She was in the chorus. So we were all there to watch Katie and cheer her on. And at halftime, they were selling all these little gifts you could get for the people, for the actors and actresses. And I heard out with all these kids, one girl and I think four boys, or five, and we looked at different things. Well, the boys weren't interested in flowers. Why would she want flowers, you know, okay? And then, oh, well, if we got her a bunch of candy bars, maybe she would share them. And then one of the boys saw a heart-shaped balloon. And he was, his parents were going through a divorce at this point. But he sees this and he looks up and he says, I think we should get her the balloon because we're family and families are love and we'll give her a, a balloon so she remembers that we're family and we're love. And I thought, it's astonishing what little kids can realize that we're, as we're looking at what else to get somebody. But that's exactly what the story of Joseph is. Family is mercy. God is merciful. God is love. Now, as Joseph's saga continues, it becomes obvious many, many years later, as his brothers are hunting for food, that they have to go to Egypt. And somehow Joseph realizes they're his older brothers, but they have no idea who he is. And if you think about it, many of our ancestors, European ancestors, came to the Americas because they were starving or because there was war in the country or because they couldn't find work. It was for survival that they immigrated and so did Joseph's brothers. And they come face to face with this powerful steward of the Pharaoh and they're begging him for mercy, really. Joseph realizes who they are, and he doesn't know who they are. And in today's reading, what we find out is here was an opportunity to maybe take revenge if you want to. But that's not how Joseph was. That wasn't the way of Joseph. That's not the way of God. So Joseph announces to them, I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? And it's sort of a deer, you know, in the headlights. What's going on here? Our text reports that these brothers couldn't answer him because they were so dismayed. They're probably thinking, how's he going to take revenge on us? Are we going to have to pay consequences for our cruel actions years and years ago? And they're probably awestruck and thinking, 
Why is he saying this? Is this really him? Who else knows that we, were, we sold him into slavery? And then Joseph continues. I'm your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Don't be distressed. How would you feel about that? Oh, man, we've been found out. But we hear words, don't be distressed. And that's what we hear throughout scriptures. We hear God and God's people not striking fear into the hearts of believers, but saying things like, fear not, don't be afraid, peace be with you at times when you're absolutely terrified. Remember Gabriel coming to uh, Mary and says, Mary, don't be afraid, you've found favor with our God. And then there's Joseph in a dream. Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And then there are the disciples huddled in a room after the crucifixion and burial of Jesus, talking about events, afraid they may be next since they're followers of Jesus. And all of a sudden, Jesus is with them in this locked place. And he says, peace be with you. And that's the same message that Joseph echoes. Don't be afraid. He's so excited to see family after all these years. And then in today's sermon, after we hear, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, we hear, be merciful just as your father is merciful. So let's take a look at the golden rule. We know how we want to be treated, but that doesn't mean other people want to be treated that way. There's a fallacy in thinking that way. Example, uh, at Christmas time we celebrated the birthday of a grand nephew, and we're ready to eat, and all of a sudden the birthday boy bursts into tears and he says, Daddy, I wanted breakfast sausage. I don't like this kind of sausage. Luckily, we have stuff frozen in microwaves, and so a couple minutes later, the five-year-old had the kind of sausage he wanted. The, he assumed that when he said sausage, Daddy knew breakfast sausage, and that's not what Daddy cooked. But you see, this isn't an eye-for-an-eye eye kind of retaliation thing, even in the golden rule, but... I don't even understand the concept of gift exchange. Is it a gift or isn't it? Right? God gives us gifts. God gives us the gift of baptism and claims us forever. There's nothing we can do or could do or anything anybody could do. It's a pure gift from God. And soon we'll be taking Holy Communion. This is my body given for you, and my blood shed for you. And all we can say is, thank you, God. We can't pay God back. Every gift God gives is a gift of grace. God is merciful and so wants us to have the best. God is merciful and wants to claim us as holy children. Joseph was merciful towards his brothers because he had mercy on them. They were starving, and he loved them. Family members are merciful to one another. Oh, we get together, and we always hear some story of somebody not quite forgetting something, but they've forgiven the person for whatever they did. Parents are merciful because they love their children, even when they upset them at times. They love them because they're merciful for, toward them, just like God's merciful towards us. You see, the attitude of love is mercy, and the action of love is generosity in word and deed, showering others with mercy as we have been showered. And we're soon going to witness the baptism of two little brothers. They will become beloved children of God. And as we welcome Wyatt and Cole uh, 
receive the sacrament of holy baptism, they become part of our family and part of this congregation and part of the community of all Christians. And so we thank the parents for bringing them this day so they may receive the mercy of God in the sacrament of holy baptism. And so we say again and again, thank you, God, for this generous act of grace. Amen. Our worship will continue with the hymn of the day. And after that, the parents and the candidates and the baptismal sponsors will come forward for the baptism. And if you young people would like to come forward and stand back there and watch it, we welcome you. Skip ahead. Yeah, because we do the Apostles' Creed as part of it. We're not going to. No big rush. I'm going to let you hold this for me, okay? I'm going to hold. Okay, we got all the characters. Hi, Smiley. <laughs> What's his name? Don't, son. Okay, hi. Yeah, come on up. You're welcome to come up. I'll pick it up a few times. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By the water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all in baptiz the baptized into one body into Christ and anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents Hunter David and Wyatt Edward for baptism? Say, we do, we do. Okay. As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, 
Bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Commandments. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Nurture them in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through the word, word, word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture these children in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help them live in the covenant of baptism and to commune with the church? We do. People of God, do you promise to support Hunter and Wyatt and pray for them in their new life in Christ? The good news is you're not doing this alone. You've got this whole, you've got your family behind you. You've got this whole congregation behind you. We have programs like Sunday school and Bible school and all kinds of activities. And here's the other good news. If you bring them regularly to worship, because we have liturgical worship, within a month or so, he'll know when to stand up, when to sit down. He'll learn. He will learn all the responses all the responses, and uh, I find out two- and three-year-olds get upset if somebody takes something out of order. Yeah, I, I had one little boy once, when we did something out of order, he jumped up and said, no, pastor, no, pastor. He knew what came next, yeah. So I ask all of us, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? We renounce them. And all of us together, do you believe in God the Father? We believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection in the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now, here. Don't hand me that. It's supposed to be warmer water in there. Okay. You come over here. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people from slavery into freedom. At the river your Son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set, out, you set us free from your power of sin and death and raised us up to new life. What's that? Is that water? Yeah. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through the Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, Hunter, are you ready? You ready? Okay.
Hunter David, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. Yeah, you can have this now, huh? You want this? Okay. Next name. I'm doing them together. Okay, Wyatt, are you ready? Yeah. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You don't know about that, huh? There. He doesn't want down, huh? You don't want to be down. Okay. There. Brothers, you now belong to Christ in whom you've been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Hunter David with the and uh, Hunter David and Wyatt Edward with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of joy and fear in the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. And now... You think you'll like this if he's standing up? Since he's up, he will, huh? huh? I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit from now and forever. Amen. Yeah. What am I going to do with this too, huh? I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit for now and forever. You are a child of God. Amen. Welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you in the body, body of Christ into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Okay, and then these go with that. You didn't even hear. Here's your candle. Are you going to blow it out? Do you know that? Okay, you going to blow it out? <laughs> okay. I can figure this one out. This one's David. Godfather. Lauren. Godmother. And there's for the two boys. Okay. Oh, you like that, huh? Well, come on, let's go meet your new family here. Yeah. Come on, Dad, bring him back so he can see. Hi. Look. You like this? Yeah, you'll get to know these people. He's a smiley one, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hi there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, there are people way back here. Yeah. Someday you'll know all their faces too, we hope, huh? Hi, are they going to wave? Yeah. 
Ага. Yeah. Can you say hi to everybody? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, see everybody? Don't you know some of these people? <laughs> Aren't some of these people familiar to you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know these guys, don't you? Hmm? Yeah. Hi. Hi there. He sat long enough. <laughs> Spirit Our worship continues with the prayers of the day. The Spirit of the Lord is upon, poured upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You may stand. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Good job. Encourage your church to you follow the leading of your love especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we first receive mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in abundance of peace. Protect all those who li whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially Jeff, Larry, Bob, Katie, Marcia, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Chuck, Henry, George, Roy, Pastor Storm, Karen, and Ellen, those on our prayer list and all whom we remember aloud or in our heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to reserve, resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, we pray for this congregation. Be with us and guide us during this time of discernment. Fill our leaders with your wisdom. Keep us mindful of the work you would have us to do. Lead us and guide us, O Lord. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Help us to keep the focus to be about the work of your kingdom, even as the search for a new pastor continues. Bless all who have taken on extra responsibility and fill them with a sense of your love and presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Time to set the table. Okay. Mm hmm. Thank you. Gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he has shown forth all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name 
and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God upon might, high rulers of all your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for the disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he again took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again as victorious Lord of all. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet for all is now ready. Lime ago you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lime ago you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lime ago you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lime ago you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves you because Jesus is love. Hi there. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves you because I didn't even bring a cracker for you. I'm sorry. The body of Christ given for you. Do you take them? The body of Christ given for you. And may God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today because Jesus loves you. I, the body of Christ given for you. Mm, the body of Christ given for you. Mm, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Oh, I see what you mean. Just stay there. <laughs> 
just rushing down the aisle. <laughs> the body of Christ given to you. The body of Christ given for 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 you. Christ given for you. Amy, the body of Christ given for you. 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 Together all along in all the okay. rooting so virtuous new may we now cease to look to you, the body of Christ to you. you the cross you hung the body of Christ given for you. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it when we get up here. <laughs> this is the body of Christ given for you. You don't get it yet? God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit blesses you because Jesus loves you. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy people of God, as you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you God's holy peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Just remember there's a, the small reception after the service today. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.